Hi everyone, welcome to the DM planning session for Fragments, episode 29. Uh, we are playing this session tomorrow for me, yesterday for you, and the VOD will be up tomorrow for you on our YouTube channel. Um, this is just going to be me planning episode 29. Um, in the last DM planning session, I, I spent a lot of time recapping chapter 28 or chapter 27, recapping from the last time. Um, I'm not gonna do that this time because uh, I'll just assume that you're up to date with stuff. Um, if you need clarification, drop by your Discord or um, watch episode 28. So uh, let's start off going to my OneNote. So I put together some uh, needs. Like I said in the last episode, I typically throughout the week or two weeks in our case i put together a list of some things that i need it's not comprehensive but it's some things that i want to cover in my planning uh, and then i start to work on an outline so i've barely put stuff together for this one um, i also haven't watched the recap yet so i'm not totally sure if um i might forget stuff uh, thankfully i'm doing this on monday and we're playing on Tuesday, so I'll have some time tomorrow, and I'm going to be running the reruns of episode 28 on our channel pretty soon, so I'll watch then and cover anything that I forgot. So, anyway, um, uh, they made it to the Zalazar in the last session, and they, uh, the party discovered, uh, you know, Zalazar is this big port city, and they discovered in the Fencian court chambers that there was an explosion and um, one of the cultists, um, yeah, had exploded inside the cult chambers. I believe Sly, Serico, and Kit are there waiting outside, and Hawkins and Skell are elsewhere in the city, and they are going to be spreading the word about how, if I'm remembering correctly, they are spreading the word about how... Um, the war, the blockade needs to end and whatever, because the Fencian court is basically going to have this vote to decide if the Isle of Mists keys are to be given to the Assassin Brigade Company, the party. Um, and everyone is very, all of the council members are very tied to their um, citizenry. So if the citizens do, uh, I mean, they are elected. So if the citizens do want, um, the blockade to end and they voice those opinions then hopefully the assassin brigade company at least is hoping that that uh the keys will be given uh and each of the council members has a key uh to the isle of mists so the reason i did that was so that the party would have uh something to do i planned out the whole key section a while back um at least in a broad sense. I wasn't sure how the Fencian Isles arc was going to go. Unfortunately, I can't show you the Fencian Isles arc page that I have over uh, here, it's secret, um, because there's stuff there that's gonna happen or that might happen and I don't want it to be spoiled. And I also don't want to <laughs> edit this heavily, but um, I didn't know how the Fencian Isles arc was gonna go. I definitely didn't expect us to go this way so because of that, I, uh, let me see if this is shuffling. I'm not sure that it is. Oh no, it is. Okay, cool. Um, I didn't know if they were going to go to many of the different islands. As of now, this is their second island besides Aerial Rock, but Aerial Rock doesn't have a council member. Let me throw up the map, uh, just so that it's up here. Let's see. Uh... Continental map, sure. So they've been on Valenia this whole time. They went to Aero Rock, which is down here, uh, which you can see on this map. Uh, and right now they're in Zolazar, which is here. And that's where the council chambers are, but all these other islands have um, delegates from the council. So uh, because of that, yeah, I didn't know if they were gonna go to all the different islands. And if they did, so they, they basically had two options after talking to Griston about the keys. It was either go to each of the islands and petition each of the council members for their key. It would have taken more time, but the odds of them winning over each council member was probably higher. 
Whereas uh, their other option, which was make this council meeting, um, it's going to be tough to talk to each of the different council members and get their votes. You know, they know a little bit about each of the council members, but not really that much in the grand scheme. So it's going to be an interesting episode to be sure. Lots of political stuff. So that gives me some interesting things to plan. So anyway, uh, for this session, I need to flesh out each of the council members, uh, the general flow of the conversation. Um, some of the council is going to shit on the party and also need to figure out how the vote is done. Uh, I want there to be some pomp and circumstance to everything. Uh, this is an old tradition, having the council meet. So I want there to be some witness to the Fencian culture uh, for the party and for viewers. Um, shitting on the party, I think that's important because the council members don't know who the party is. Why would they trust all of these people from different continents to basically open up their gates to the Feywild? Um, you know, on the Isle of Mists is a essentially a permanent portal that's just always open. So once you open that up, there's no closing it without a great deal of magic and without the Vestment Arcanum, which, you know, they're the powerful wizards in the world, uh, they've pretty much gone away. So without them, it's pretty hard to shut it down. So um, I want to flesh out all that stuff. I need to have a good scene. I talked about this in my last uh, planning video. Um, there is a great resource called like guide for the lazy dungeon master or something i've totally forgotten i've watched that um it's going to be in the description below but basically it says i don't follow it to a t but there's one thing that i like doing which is throwing at least one good scene in um good scene can be anything from describing a landscape to um, a conversation really going into detail so you know to put the players in that spot something that they will remember really well um from memory, you know, uh, and the viewers too, to really put you guys in the place. And I want to really focus on that so that I can keep getting better at that because I don't always plan those very well. I usually just improvise them. And looking back, I always realize that there are things I would have rather done. Um, all right, next thing is consider NPCs and events for Zuskel and Hulk while proselytizing. So, um, which for some reason, OneNote doesn't think that's a real word. Proselytize, oh, there's no T, no. Oops. Um, they're going to go out and talk about how, like I said, the Isle of Mists is necessary for the blockade to end. So I need to think about some interesting things that could happen for them. So it's not just, I mean, I could just improvise, which I might do. But if I plan some stuff out, then it might be more memorable. So that's cool. Um, how to get Hawkins and Skell to the fight. So right now, there are only three of them at the... Um, at the fencing court, which, where's the map? Okay, so, uh, it's probably the, let's see, draw. Oh, I don't have my tablet out. Oh, well, um, gosh dang. I'm a fool. Hi, I'm back. So, um, Zelazar, the city. So this is about probably, no, that's not true. Um, this right here, uh, is where the council chambers are, probably. Um, and Zuskel and Honk are probably around, hmm, maybe here-ish. So, I need to get them there somehow. Gotta think about that. And then, let's see, um, places and stuff to do in the three days. I think it's about three days, right? So let me check the calendar just to make sure that it's it. I'm right. Um, so Fencian Court is on the 6th. They arrived on this day. I'll put a note here. Uh, arrival in Zelazar, note repeats never, cool. Um, so they have one, two, three days. Today they will do the fight. Um, it's about 4 or 5 p.m. 
Um, so they'll do the fight. I do already have the fight, which I showed on the last planning video. And I'll show that here as well. Um, against Kalbrezu, Atanaruk, and two Howlers. Uh, I don't know why Kit is hurt. Zeskel does not have all of her... Uh, that's everything? Yeah. She does not have all of her sorcery points because um, Teacher tried to scry on them and um, Kaldrath blocked it and basically used sorcery points to stop that. So uh, that's just a sign that something is happening and yeah. I don't know why Kit is in pain. I need to message Shannon because I don't know why she's bloody, but that's fine. Um, so yeah, this fight will be cool, and these are all flames and stuff, and this is a dead person and I, that I just drew. <laughs> um, I don't know if the Wayward Soul is still broken. I might need to work on that because I missed... I mean, they're not going to be in the Wayward Soul this session, so it's okay, but... Anyway, um, so let's see. Let's go to the... Uh, oh yeah, I need to do... The, oh, that's what I was saying. Uh, we need to do... We need to plan stuff to do in the three days. So I know that I did... I put some stuff, uh, some stores, and a church uh, here. There's the Salton Sea and the Kraken's Grasp. I think... I think they're staying in the Kraken's Grasp. I'm, I'll have to chat. Well, hold on. I have my... We're just gonna do it. We're doing it live, guys. That's we're doing it live. I, I I think I I forgot to talk about this last session, but I always keep a notebook on my desk when we're playing, and this is where I'll write down small things. Um, Kraken's grasp. Yes, they're staying in the Kraken's grasp, and I'll also write down. I don't know if you can see it, but I have like lists of names that I can pull from really quickly if I need to so it's just right here on my desk so if I need a name uh, when I'm improvising stuff I'll just pick a voice and say the name um, and for those I'll either poke my own brain or I will like I'll just come up with them or I'll go to a generator and just write all that stuff down because it doesn't matter as much uh, for bigger people for bigger um, NPCs I always think of the name um, think of something that I think is cool. So anyway, uh, they're staying in the Kraken's Grasp, run by a Triton couple, Hubert and Casimir, um, two male Tritons. Uh, that'll be cool to kind of flesh them out. I need to go back and write down the descriptions that I did for them. One of them has like long hair and one of them has short hair and I, I can't remember. Um, shops, there's a, uh, general store called the Merry Few. Uh, Cognizant and Carefree is a machinery store. The Dapper Lich is a magic store. Um, that'll be cool if they go there. I think I should make some kind of attraction there as well. I'll need to think about that. I think the main deity here is Valkor, who is of the sea. Um... Actually, I'm going to say that um, notable uh, try hit spire. So basically, it's a trident pointing towards this guy, and that's cool. That's a little callback to our Kingmaker campaign that Austin ran, where uh, Shannon played Eden, who was a cleric of Velker, and she had a trident. And she was a trident. So... Uh, some kind of attractions, though. What are some cool attractions? I mean, fighting pit, that's pretty typical. Oh, there's a cobweb on my TV. Um, maybe if, uh, yeah, okay, I'll write this down. Um... Uh, let's do the the brand bearer 
The brand bearer. Um. The band bearer ring. Um. And this is a fighting pits on the easternmost uh, arm of the city. The docks that stretch out. Um, also, that's interesting. I think the brand bearers are going to be a. I want to say a gang. Maybe. I think if there's a mob-esque entity, that would be kind of cool. There's a golden retriever hair in my water. That was pleasant. Um, so fighting pit there. Let's say run by... Um, I'll just say Bookie is a... Uh, let's go full orc. Orc man named, uh, let's say, actually, let's say woman. Orc woman named Jersia. Jersia. Works for me. Um, let's say champion is a dwarf. Let's say agendered. Named. Loth. Um. Uh, needle. I must say, I always go to the word grasp for naming everything. I love the name grasp. I love the name clutch for everything. Loth needle. Um, <laughs> uh, breaker. Sure. Loth needle breaker works for me. Um, let's see the brand bearer ring. Let's see. Other attractions could be some kind of like old timey Ferris wheel might be cool. I can't remember what I named the uh, Baronor's site. So let's say there is the um, Baronor's wings. Baronor's wings is a um, uh, Ferris wheel. Cool. Um, let's see. Otherwise, nah. Whatever. I can improvise other stuff. I also have like shops and stuff on my note in my notebook. Uh, so okay, that's all done. Let's go to sessions, episode twenty-nine. Um. So they are going to be cleaning for a few days. Other stuff too. Sure. I don't know what else they're gonna do. Oh, maybe I should do an alchemist shop. Oh, shit. Uh, let's say... Oh, BB is totally tearing up my wall with her claws. Uh, let's say something with, uh, Juniper... The Juniper Landing. Uh... Alchemists... Um, Yuri, uh, Yuri, maybe Yuri, Yuri Pax. Mm, I always go gnomes for alchemists, so maybe it's a. Oh, female. Female halfling. Okay, alchemist, what else might they want to go to? I think I put a... Yeah, smithy stuff that can go to Cognizant and Carefree. Okay, that's probably enough. I can... I can improvise the rest. Um, okay, for an outline, they're going to fight in the council chambers. Um, preceding that, they... 
Um, might try to contact. Uh, but we're going to start off with them. And while we're there, they're going to... Let's come up with... Uh, streets. Uh, let's make a subcategory for streets of Zolazar. Uh, different things that they could come across. Maybe I'll do a roll table for that. That might be cool, right? A little roll table. Uh, let's do 1D... Uh, 6. They can come across two things. No, I'll do 1D4. They can go come across one thing. <laughs> Um, let's see, one, they will meet Ellis, Ellis Axelby, uh, which is an NPC I've had planned for probably, let's see, this is chapter 29, so probably for about 20 sessions I've had this NPC planned, and I just haven't, Adrian get out of here um just haven't uh put ellis in yet don't even know if that'll chill out adrian uh don't even know if that'll come up maybe pause hold on no just kidding uh let me silence everything real quick Okay. Silence Discord. Sorry about that. So she might come in. That might be cool. Um, okay. Let's also say... Um, maybe I could have a cool callback to Honk's first or their first session. So maybe a street brawl with... Um, Fire Genasi woman uh, from what island could I have a Fire Genasi woman be from? Uh, let's see, maybe a Vor... or Breek, maybe? Yeah, let's say Breek. Sure. Uh, so then Hawk could fight her and Zeskel could work the crowds like they've done plenty of times before and there uh, if they beat her maybe talk Maybe she has some kind of influence over uh, uh, Amiara That would be cool Let's see number three I could do I don't want to have them fight something with initiative. I think that will take over, yeah, uh, that. Maybe they could see something potentially fishy. Maybe a pull for the uh, brand bearers. Is that what I just said? The brand bearers? Yeah, okay, so um, uh, brand bearer hook. This will be, oops. Uh, three. What would be a good calling card for the brand bearers? Maybe a mask that looks like a masquerade mask, but has a bird's beak, maybe? Um... Walking out of a nearby store, um, putting money in a large bag. Sure. Uh, just to establish that they exist in the city. And then let's see, four. Maybe they will come across a group of. Like, not necessarily a riot, but just protesters, maybe? Group, uh, there would be a crier. 
Um, human woman. Speaking about. Sorry, mother in law texted me. A uh, human woman speaking about. How the council. Doesn't give a shit about the blockade. They're still doing like things. I think that'll be cool. Uh, show like how the actual people are doing because the ABC, the party is in an interesting position where they don't necessarily uh, have much of a. <laughs> Phoebe! Phoebe! Honey! Crap out of Phoebe, come on. Come on, Phoebe! Come on. Get out of here, you crazy naminal. Wow, that scared me. Um, they're in an interesting position where they don't know... Like a lot about what people think. They haven't talked to an average folk about the, the politics recently so that would be cool um yeah okay okay i like that uh let's do streets of zolazar along the way i can improvise them talking to people they can go to some inns and it'll be cool uh then we will go to contacting zeskel and honk which will be um Sorry if you can hear Phoebe barking, that's really annoying. Uh, that's where Sly, Serico, and Kit will probably have... Uh, crap, what's her name? Um, I'm losing my freaking mind right now. Dragon Scales... No. Uh, Fancy and Isles... Primera. Primera, who's the mage of Mr. Brock, she will probably contact them all and say, yo, uh, come right away. Then they will do the fight. Um, once they are in the fight, I don't know how quickly the fight will go. It should be fun. Uh, hopefully it won't take that long. We had a fight last session and it took a while, but that's because there were like 30 people I was controlling alone and then all of the party members so it was kind of tough to keep that moving quickly but it, it went pretty well uh honestly it was only like an hour so really good happy with that um let's see so that fight is gonna take place then um loot wise there's probably not going to be be much um council chambers loot i think probably a of curved red steel will be found on the body that they use to kill themselves with the glabrezu won't have anything special i don't think Actually, let's take a look. Let's take a look at what they have. Fenting Court Chambers. What does a Glabrezu have? Pincer and Fist, so they don't carry anything. Okay, Howlers don't carry anything. The Tanaruk has a great sword. I could give them a great sword, but none of them can use a great sword. At least they could sell it, right? Yeah, they could sell it. I guess so. Yeah, so there's that great sword. Uh, I'll do that too. Uh, otherwise, there's not going to be any money. So, but they could be paid. Mm. They probably won't be paid. I think Tempest will probably. They're going to be paid by earning cred with the council. So. Uh, plus, they have a ton of money, I think. I think 
No, maybe I did. They they didn't get to the shipwreck last session, so I I don't think they have too much money, but that's okay because they are saving the Fencian Isles, so they'll be fine. Uh, find the council chambers after that. Um, um, let's see. Aftermath. Nimbus is grateful. Um... for three days and then on the sixth I think it is sixth yep uh, council at noon on the sixth I need to check this if there are any spoilers that sucks I don't think so though uh, let's see 32 minutes past midday, a temporal nexus will occur. Um, 32 minutes in, tell hits. This is when... This is when the party's addressed. So I think this is important because the law keeper told hits and Sly and Serico in the last session that 32 minutes past midday, there was going to be a, a temporal nexus. So basically a point in time when paths diverge or converge. Um, so I left it pretty open. Um, so this is the point when the party gets to say something. This is the part when things happen and when uh, Sly and Serico have Oh, I'm sorry. This has probably been echoing really bad. I'm so sorry about that. Just realized. Um, yes, yeah, so this is when Sly and Serico can basically petition for the Isle of Mist to open up. Um, there are, I will say, there are plenty of other ways to do this arc. Um, this is definitely a choice, right? They could have, they could still totally break their. Well, they kind of made a fey bargain with Kelkor, so it'd be tough to break that without really incurring some bad stuff. Uh, they could still fight Kelkor if they wanted to, take Nadri, and not open the Isle of Mists. Um, I don't think they're going to do that. I think they're probably going to try to get the Isle of Mists open. So it all just depends on how they talk. Um, so let's see. Um, oops. Um, so lots of just talking for a bit. I'll probably do little bits of conversation. It might be hard to follow for people, and also it's going to be difficult for me to do, I think. But it'll still be pretty fun. Uh, let's see. Oops. Let's go to Fancy and Isles information, islands and stuff. I need all of this on one page. I don't. Yeah, I need to put all that on one page, so I'll do that afterwards. Uh, let's see. Uh, I did this already. The scene? Not sure about that. How to get Hawkins and Skell to fight, I think. Primera is going to contact them. Zillas are in place to do in three days. So yeah, they're going to clean for three days. And Backspeed is going to help. Uh, as well as this it's tempests uh staff sure oops well i'm kind of grateful uh okay so let's see that's when the party is addressed they can make whatever and then they will keep talking it's going to be a lot of improv and i'm okay with that i think that'll be really fun as long as i don't hesitate too much it should the flow should be really cool and hopefully the players will respond to that and really get into it i'm hoping that this will be a really 
like quick-witted conversation between the I mean these people of high politics and the characters uh, and I think the players can manage that hopefully <laughs> I I my only issue is that they'll sometimes they're worried about pulling the trigger so I hope that Austin isn't the only one who talks uh, not because Austin doesn't come up with good ideas but because um, the other perspectives might lend some humanity to the conversation whereas I think Serico is acting kind of without humanity and not just because he's a genasi um so then we'll say the votes and let's see i'll put the vote over here uh, i want some cool kind of thing so i'll say that so it's a circular table maybe uh, they have to vote i or nay by um, in golden, on their arm, and then okay. So they vote by flipping their arms. I think this is an interesting kind of look into the past because the the era of the fencian i mean well the fencian isles in elder eras was very tribal right their islands weren't as civilized as they were today there's a lot of warring and it was very i always think um when i think of them i think of like polynesian or Ma uh, maori maori i don't know i botched that i'm sorry or like early hawaiian uh, roots so like lots of like arm tattoos and stuff um and i think racially it's more diverse now than it probably was in those times but they still kind of hold on to those roots when it's time for really old um traditions and stuff so i think having like writing golden text on their arm putting it forward then the image of all nine of them i think in a circle and they flip their arms and then the something will happen like gold will right and then there'll be a, a or, or i or nay um cool and i don't think any votes are going to be sure i think gristan is the only one who will be sure and his vote counts for two <clears throat> um okay so after the vote if i presents the keys if nay ooh that could cause some issues and I'm ooh uh Gristan um adjourn the council oop Gristan So I think their only recourse at that point will be finding the keys somehow, like going to each of the council members and trying to get their keys some way or another. Could be tough, could turn into some heist stuff. So we'll see how that goes. I might be improvising or at that point, if it's still pretty early or like halfway through the session, I'll probably cut to a break so I can see based on their plan what they're going to do. If yeah so we'll see it's all up to checks honestly and none of these people are very charismatic so we'll see how that all goes um okay yes i need a place for all of the uh where the fencing court stays um the the royal chambers of sure um super fancy inn where they stay works for me it can have a lame title because it's old um okay so i'll present the if it's an i vote then i will present the keys they will be able to write that down and start working through that puzzle 
and see if they can figure anything out. It could really accelerate things a lot, and we could be getting somewhere... Like in the next session, we could be getting close to the end. Um, while they're here, I don't know if they're going to go after the Glimmer Fragments that I've been teasing the whole time. I should... That'll go in my random stuff, maybe. Um, let's see if I... So... Yeah, I don't really know after that. It's either going to be probably stay in the aisles and get all the rest of the keys or go towards... Um, go towards the Glimmer Fragment. Uh, I don't know if they're going to look for Rustin either. Um, I'm just going to put possibilities because I honestly don't know what they're going to do. Uh, look for Rustin, Glimmer Fragments, and... Oh, or... Uh, Talk to council members. Yeah, we'll see. If, man, I don't know what they're going to do if they don't get the vote. That'll be some improv. We'll see what they do. They'll come up with something, I'm sure. Okay, um, that's good enough for that. For a scene, still not sure. Maybe, maybe I'll flesh out the scene with the arms. I think that would be cool. I think that's going to be probably a really good point. Um... I'll script that to some degree. Awesome. Um, shit on the party. And the vote, flow of conversation, and flush out each member. So let's go and do all of the members. Uh, I'm going to do a new page. Let's do council members. I'm going to bring in all of their pictures here real quick so that I can uh, all their tokens rather. All right, I'm back. So here I have uh, all of the council members. I'm going to flesh out all this right now um, for the benefit of everything. Uh, so Gristan, they know a lot about him, probably uh, middle aged um, as Marman of probably like six three ish uh they know what he looks like uh actually i'll do an appearance uh lilia lair if i'm not mistaken so i put what island and then what the capital of the island is uh to help me uh he's a human woman Human woman, maybe late 40s. Uh, I'm not going to worry about height for most of them. I mean, I do CL as a Kalashtar woman. Silver eyes. Tempest is a... Oops. She is an air Nessie woman. Not sure. Probably honestly mid 30s. She's younger. Uh, Gert is. Oops, half orf. Man around six four. Not super tall. Like not as tall as Honk by any means um probably more spindly like wearing a thin jacket with fur on the collar Let's see caution is a 
Tempest? Or Tempest, what the hell? Um, Tiefling woman. Caution might be the youngest. Yeah, maybe Caution is the youngest. Maybe youngest there. Venter Proud Shell is the eldest. Portal male. Eldest there. And uh, Orion Breakbone is. Um, uh, Buff on top. Uh, Fist of R is a UNT Plur Plur Blade Woman Hair is tied back and comes. A point in the middle of her forehead. Um, I don't own any of these images, by the way. Uh, if anyone does own these, let me know. I would love to give you credit. Um, okay, Venter. So, appearance, sure. Um, but the biggest issue is personality though and like why why they would vote one way versus the other i need to consider that so gristan is for sure a yes uh, i don't need his personality i will actually uh he is um he wants the blockade to be over his people but all of the island like everyone who lives in the isles are his people um kind of welcoming Lilia Lair is late 40 she's probably more stern um uh, Bracken Rock is the northern, the northeasternmost island in the Fencian Isles. Um, lots of harpy attacks and rocks live there, so uh, she has to have a hard edge. But um, fierce warrior. Um, willing to fight to end the blockade probably right so rather than give up the keys maybe she'd be willing to fight more Amiara du Ciel is on break and the break is uh gosh dang it which island is Breek? Uh, Breek is the top one. So that's where they have a lot of giants, storm giants, particularly. Um, there are huge castles of storm giants. Um, she has a Clash Tar dreams, but also I want to play uh, away from that trope. So I don't want her to be a mystic necessarily. Ooh, excuse me. She's the northernmost. She's probably had. So. Um, most pressure from the consortium. Uh, along with that, raids have... Raids have taken out a lot of their fishermen. They used to fish a lot to the north, and they receive from... Uh, Dulcin, which has been blocked. So they're probably starving the worst. Uh, Amiara wants them to end the blockade for sure. Tempest, let's go. Uh, let's see, I'll move all these. So moving down, Tempest. Uh, they are in Ili Lair uh, right now. 
I realize that some of this isn't, they're not strictly beliefs and personality stuff, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. Um, so Tempest is young as well, but not the youngest. She is basically tasked with keeping, um, uh, keeping the chambers in order. Isle Lair is the central aisle, so it's, I mean, everyone comes there for it's the big important stuff. I mean, that's where festivals are held and I'm actually going to write that down. Festivals are held there and I think she is probably very easygoing, like the wind, right? Um, um, the least amount of pressure from the blockade, but highest amount of poverty. Uh, as I alluded to in the last session, there's a lot of poverty in Isle Lair because they rely completely on trade and uh, all of the, because of the hex that was placed on the islands, um, they can't fish uh and although the fencian isles the bays and everything are typically very um fertile of fish and crops and all that crap uh they have had nothing so they're starving and i think they want the hex to end they don't really care what happens to the blockade but they want the hex to end um okay gert is the half orc who lives on fenian um, I believe Finian is this one. Yep. Okay. And he lives in Susasir. Uh, and the dunes of the Arbiter are right nearby. So that's where all the criminals go. Um, he's probably, okay. Actually, this is interesting. Uh, doesn't want the dunes to be overtaken by, oops, blockaders. Blah, blah, by the blockaders because that's um a big concern so that's the highest form of punishment in the fencian isles is sending those sending all the criminals to the dunes of the arbiter um basically to die but it's worse than death kind of it's seen as worse than death they don't they don't uh have um executions they just send them to the dunes of the arbiter um and that's like the worst thing so he doesn't want the dunes to be overtaken he doesn't want that conflict to be moved to his island because he also doesn't feel too much pressure um oops um he might be a little hesitant to give up his key yeah. Also, as a point, I think it'll be interesting if there is a nay vote. I think it'll be interesting to have some of them, some of the council members give the keys. It kind of depends who votes yay uh, or I or nay because um, they some of the keys are more important than some other ones. So they could make it through they could find the isle of mists without all of them um okay so gert um is basically he wants to keep his people safe but also doesn't want an uprising right enough troubles from undead uh before the blockade oops before the blockade because those the undead have kind of fucked off while the undead uh while the blockade has been going on um caution so caution is going to be one of the hardest to um sway i think caution and venter are going to be two of the hardest to sway and that's mostly I improvised that stuff a while back, but I think that's probably true. I think caution takes 
uh, Cha very seriously uh, because she's new. Uh, doesn't want to subject the Isles to constant threats. Also on her island, something to consider is the Order of the Dragon. The Order of the Blue Dragon holds a lot of sway there, and perhaps the Order of the Blue Dragon doesn't want the Isle of Myth to take it over. Mm, yeah. Yeah. That one might be tough. Um, I think she probably listens to... She really cares about the Order of the Blue Dragon. Maybe she was a member. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna say that, actually. Um, okay. Do the, does the Isle of the Blue Dragon... Or Order of the Blue Dragon have any... Mercenaries, yeah, very well structured for the yeah. Members, nope. Uh, so they don't have any kind of markings on them, so that, but that's okay. Um, I'll say she has a uh, crest of a blue dragon burn into her palm. I think that's cool burn into her palm. I think. I'll have to listen back and see if Softpaws on Snow had something. So, that's important. Uh, Vinter Proudshell is the eldest one. It's kind... So, it's kind of cliche to have the oldest person be the most rooted, but I think in this case, since I've foreshadowed that the most, I think this will be true. So, um... Remembers the time when, um, mm -hmm. okay, doesn't want to risk the people. I don't think that's pretty good. Um, he is going to be... He has some magic potential. Uh, the chase is central as well. This is the chase right here with Duhalir. So they're pretty central, but uh, that's where the druids are from. Right, that's where the druids crossed over. Uh, from Feywild into... It's a long time ago. Um... Okay, that's important. Uh, Orion Breakbone. Southernmost Isle. So mm, that means they've been seeing a lot of the Green Armada stuff. I'll say he's probably... Uh, ready to get trade going with Nadir again. Both are suffering. Right, so the... Um, the Demont line in the Demont line in uh, Madir is suffering because they can't get the Fencian trade stuff. So I think Orion is ready to get things moving. He doesn't really care about the tradition. Uh, he's just ready to go. Uh, I'll just say tired of waiting. And finally, Fist of Var. Mm. 
Motomer is this island. Affects the entire entire bin. Um, they are probably the receiving line for a lot of Illyrian stuff. Illyrian? Illyrian. I like Illyrian more, but Illyrian makes more sense. Trade. So similar, but let's see. Their pro uh Thisto Var is Maybe she's religious. Let's say Um Okay, so I think uh, Thistavar worships Denir, who is the god of writing and knowledge. Um, I think... Probably very interested in the Isle of Mists, in finding out what's there, wants to know, has been curious for a long time. Sure. Right, because the Isle of Mists isn't just to Thistavar, it's not just this myth that the rest of the citizenry would believe. She would know that it's more or less real and would have been doing her research trying to find out for a long time. So, uh, yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, willing to fight to end the blockade. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay, so I think this is pretty good. Um, let's do voices real quick. Agristan is down here. He has an accent like this, which is hard to understand sometimes, but this is what he has. Uh, Lilia Lair is a human woman. Maybe she will be English. Um, she'll say... Uh, let's see, she's slightly more mature, so maybe... Ah, so, you have all come to this council meeting. How oh, wonderful. Mm, uh, well, but maybe more... She's more stern. Maybe... You have called us here? Why have you called us here? This is not something that you can do so lightly, Grestan. Okay, that's pretty good. I like that. Uh, Amiara it will probably be more soft-spoken. Say... We have had a great deal of issues with the consortium. We would very much like to end these blockades. To end these blockades. Maybe I could give her a bit of an accent. Hmm, I don't know what kind of accent though. Maybe I'll just stick with some kind of almost English accent. Maybe a transatlantic accent. Thoughts? I don't know. Uh, that works for me, though. Tempest. Uh, let's see. She's more young. She'll say maybe... Oh, hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, maybe more energetic. Hey. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the council. We'll be starting very soon, but unfortunately, we've had a little bit of an issue with... With, uh, these... Uh, so someone might have exploded on the inside there. So we're going to need someone to clean it up, and in a few days... Yeah, maybe uh, kind of a breathy voice. Um, let's see, that's Tempest Girt Me Dawn, is... Hey, why do you do this? No, mm, that's too close to Kristan's. Maybe a Scottish accent? Oh, this is very nice. These people come from Elira, telling us what we should do. We can't have this consortium taken over. Sus is here. And over these undead, they're causing issues these days. I think that would be good. Maybe a Scottish accent for him, because enough dwarves are Scottish, right? You gotta break that motif at some point. Caution. She will most likely be clean cut, very to the point. Uh, takes her job very seriously. 
I do not see why you all, I do not see why all of you must struggle against this truth. The Isle of Mists is dangerous, and if you would give up our state secrets so willingly, perhaps none of you should have been elected in the first place. You have all overstepped your bounds. This group from Alira should not speak for us. We should speak for ourselves. We, sub we, sub uh, we have the power to defend ourselves. All that we must do is strike. Okay. Uh, I think that's pretty good. Uh, Vinter Proudshell is an old man. I agree with her. These men outspoken lately, but I think that you're all being a bit too hasty. Opening up our islands to the Isle of Mists is dangerous. We don't know what's waiting on the other side. That's pretty good. Uh, I like that a lot. That's going to tire me out a lot. Orion Breakbone... Hey, what are you all doing? You best be maybe a little bit of a uh, not exactly Cockney, but a more Londony accent. Like, oh, you best be making a decision. Um, those folks in Madrid they're really struggling because of us. We can't get trade to them. My people are starving. Fuck tradition. Fuck the crown, fuck this blockade. We gotta end it one way or another. And this of our... Um... Maybe a ba my bad French accent. This is something that we must consider. We cannot step nightly by. Well, others... Such for the Isle of Mists. Learning about the Isle of Mists is part of our culture. Okay, I like that. That plays into the UNT stuff a lot. Um, that's pretty good. I actually really like that. I'll have to listen to this <laughs> before I sesh again. So I really think that's pretty good. And I'll keep tabs on my notes about who I think will be more likely to agree with the votes uh, or who will deny the votes. Oh, wow, that's moving so slowly. Uh, okay, so Thista, you can go there. Uh, I think that's pretty good for that. I'm really going to improvise a lot. Um, and I really just, as long as I remember not to stumble over my own words all too much you know as long as i remember to just stick with it keep going not stop um i think it'll be a really cool scene i might script out a little 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 little, little bit but for the most part it's going to be pretty open um okay so we got that done i'm pretty happy with that i think that's really good um then all i need now is some random stuff uh, that could happen. I always like throwing this in. Um, let's see. Um, rumor. Uh, let's see. Half orcs in... Dolson have been on the rise. There's a new chief of Kron Village. Sure. Um, that's a hook for something that I've been planning for a while. Um, let's see. Another rumor, perhaps. No, let's do maybe a dream. Or, if Zeskel runs out of sorcery points, maybe... Teacher will speak to her? No, maybe not. 
Let's see. What about kids? Maybe, um, I, mm. enough Sly and Serico stuff can happen. I think Seskel stuff and Hawk stuff have been happening, so maybe focusing on Kit for something might be cool. So I could have. Yeah, I could have Sorcium, a Sorcium vein be, maybe. Thunderwave Peak is. Uh, maybe is about to erupt and that's where the store seam is so honestly not i think the prep that i've done so far is really cool and that's really all i'm gonna prepare i think for this session um i also sunder i need to write this down so i don't forget and i mean who knows so that gives me a lot to talk about with the council members um, and I'm really excited for that. So thank you for watching the planning session for chapter 29 of Fragments. This is going to be a fantastic session, going to be a lot of fun. I'm really excited for it. A lot of important things are going to happen, and it paves the way for the rest of the arc, which I have planned, and I hope that the party and all of you are excited for it. So yes, uh, thanks again for watching. Have a wonderful Telltale Day. Bye.